In our additive manufacturing lecture for today, we are still continuing on the discussion of designing for additive manufacturing. Uh, today we will talk about designing uh, parts for material jetting 3D printing. As we discussed before, material jetting is uh, considered one of the most accurate 3D printing technologies that can give you high detailed parts and that possess some kind of very smooth surface. Uh, material jetting printers, sometimes they can, some types of it, they give you full color, multi-material parts, and uh, usually the material jetting are used to create like realistic visual prototypes and models, but usually these parts are brittle and they're not designed for any kind of functional applications, but it can give you real good results, realistic prototypes for kind of visual illustration and educational purposes. Um, looking back at the material jetting sketch, we can see we have here our um, inkjet print head that can move um, in X and Y direction for the for the top plane, and your part is being built layer by layer on the on the build platform, and the the base is um, elevated or either raised or pulled downward based on the um, as the as the program is requesting from the material to be able to achieve the final 3d part needed uh, so one of the uh, one of the first precautions while designing for material jetting similar as the precautions we talked about before for other kinds of 3d printing with a little uh, with a minor deviation so firstly if you are doing kind of major support walls then you want to ensure that the minimum wall thickness for the major supported walls to be uh, one millimeter or higher that's one of the things to keep in mind so that you will not have any kind of failed print or any future failure during uh, during the usage of that part um, if you have any other kinds of, of walls other than the wells other than the well supported walls like this kind of design in here you have two parallel walls that are supported by a base so in this case the minimum wall thickness for the major supported walls should be um, one millimeter or higher for the pin diameter if you're planning to extrude any kinds of pin pin design in your final part that you're going to print then you want to ensure that the diameter of that pin to be at least 0.5 millimeters or higher that is the design recommendation to avoid any kind of failure during printing uh, so that to keep in mind um, if you are planning to do holes as we discussed in other 3d printing precaution design before um, if you want your hole to be successfully printed then your minimum diameter should be at least 0.5 millimeters or higher um, usually the holes should be oriented uh, vertically in like in respect to the to the um, to the layer build or to the in respect to the direction of build for the nozzle so that you can maximize uh, the circularity of that feature if you have extruded or engraved details if your details are going higher than the uh, surface of of most of your design or it's getting engraved inside your design uh, then you want to make sure that the depth of engraving to be minimum of 0.5 millimeters and the height in here should be for the extrusion um, of minimum of 0.5 millimeters in height other than that your um, extrusion or your engraved design will be kind of melted or distorted uh, before the part will solidify during the printing for the feature size if you have this kind of feature in your design then uh, the material jetting can produce part details as low as 0.25 of a millimeter but not less than that if you have moving parts we can see here there's an assembly there's a male female engagement assembly um, in this case, the assembled parts, either hinges, joints, etc., 
they should be between 0.15 up to 0.2 millimeter clearance around all sides like if you're having a pin in here and you're having a hole in here between the diameter of the pin and the diameter of the hole the hole should be 0.15 millimeters bigger than the diameter of of the pin or vice versa or the diameter of the pin should be 0.15 up to 0.2 millimeters less in diameter than the diameter of this hole this way uh, uh, it will allow for kind of cleaning or removal of any supported materials embedded in that design um, so that you, it can be accessible in that case for tolerances in general if you are designing with tolerance you need to have a certain tolerance in your design for a certain purpose um, if you are designing that part using the material jetting then it should be plus minus 0.1 millimeters up to 0.3 millimeters depending on the geometry and material that you are using. The design applications for material jetting. You can create full color models. Uh, it will give you this kind of 3D printing technology will give you high level of accuracy. It will give you smooth surface finish and a variety of color options. Um, all these reasons make this material jetting technology to be uh, a very good choice if you want to do presentations and uh, uh, either for your model or even creating uh, display prototypes. So that's the kind of printing technique that you want to start with if you are looking into these kinds of applications. If your application is um, injection mold prototypes, then the surface finish that you will get will be um, excellent and it will be you will be able to showcase uh, that part in terms of appearance um, before even uh, investing in, in, in uh, applying that kind of prototype or showcase. Uh, with all kind of expensive toolings so you can start with this with this method if you want to create injection mold prototypes uh, before you do your your final molds you can look into your mold uh, close enough to reality before you do kind of expensive tooling um, it's 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 well known that material jetting is regularly used as a method to produce uh, low value injection molds like if you are not using if you're not making 1 million injection molds if you're going like one up to 500 molds maybe 1000 molds um, 100 molds then you can do uh, the material jetting to achieve that because you can get accuracy and smooth surface uh, so these molds will have only f very little post-processing and it will be a cost-effective solution for production runs uh, up to 100 parts in average. For enclosures, if you are designing enclosures for, for, for your maybe certain PCB, certain application that needs an enclosure to hold the hardware together, uh, even though the material jetting can give you brittle part and non-functional part, uh, but you have you have a large range of, of material and colors that are available that will meet your your design needs. And um, depending if if you're planning to do uh, either customized enclosure or you want to do a full production enclosure, and as well you can apply some kind of snap fit connections uh, that can be integrated into the enclosure designs as well. And again, I'm reminding that we will talk about enclosures designs using 3D printing in details as moving forward in the course. In material jetting 3D printing, you can uh, design glossy or matte materials or parts. So uh, this kind of 3D printing technology give you options to print parts with either matte or glossy settings. Matte settings will usually give you a thin layer of support across the entire part 
uh, without caring about the orientation. For the glossy settings, uh, you will only use support material where required so that you will allow uh, uh, enough strength or mechanical properties for building the model, similar to overhangs, drafts, cavities, etc. So the advantage of printing with a glossy uh, uh, mode or glossy settings that it will give you uh, strength of thin walls and aesthetic smooth uh, finished parts. And in the same time, it will reduce the material used uh, during the build. But the, the downside of it that it will have a non-uniform finish on the part and it will have a kind of um, maybe ignorable or negligible rounding of sharp edges and corners on top surfaces, similar as all kind of similar as most of the 3D printing application where the nozzle uh, radius will affect the sharp edges accuracy. For using the matte method, uh, the good side of it, it will give you uh, accuracy for the part in general and it will give you a uniform finish. The bad side of it, it will give you additional material requirement and uh, additional cleaning and uh, in, at the end it will give you a softer uh, surface softer could be even weaker surface not not the good softer so um, you need to keep that in mind while going with the matte uh, application for material jetting um, material jetting provides dissolvable supports which means you design the main um, the main object the main part or the main assembly with a certain material and all the supporting materials will be a uh, different material that can be dissolved so when you finish your design you just dip your uh, design with the support in a in a specific uh, solvent and this solvent will be able to accordingly dissolve the supported uh, material and keep your original part material which will give you a surface that will show no indication of support at all and um, that will let you know as well that the orientation of the part will be more flexible than all other 3D technologies. Um, it will give you as well some homogeneity of material jetted parts uh, which will give greater design freedom and will allow you to do complex uh, designs that can be easily printed and post-processed as well. Uh, then you can do one of the applications as well that you can do multi color printing. Uh, you can uh, create a certain print uh, setup process and you can assign the red, green, blue color codes combina combination to the part as needed. Even if you are, if you want to do it through the CAD design software, then you can give your parts a certain color and texture. Uh, then you export it with the, with the design to the printer. Uh, um, as well, you can have some kind of pattern prints and finishes and all of them will be printed um, or applied to the parts in CAD and then exported. And um, all of these details can be accompanied with the final printed, with the final 3D printed uh, product as the customer or the user is, uh, is looking for. You can see here, an example of multicolor, multi-material, 3D printed material jetting design. It's a high-end design that's, this design in specific is used for uh, medical field teaching educational purposes. So you can design the skin with, let's say, silicone. You can design the inner materials with a kind of rubbery material. You can apply colors as needed. And you can even assemble or disassemble these parts as needed. So it could be a very helpful tool uh, for, for, for all these kinds of applications. Uh, the advantages of printing with multicolor um, is that uh, you can just have the colors you want, the patterns you want on your parts through your CAD software and you print it and you will have the result as needed. Some machines they can, for, for this kind of technology, can print rubber and rigid components on the same tree and within the same part or as a blend. 
So in this way, you can even create a new material properties, either softer rubber or a hard rigid material, uh, just by doing the right combination of material as needed. Um, so usually, you know, you want to keep in mind that while you're designing through your CAD, you want to assign the needed material and the needed colors uh, while doing the design. Then you can create all kinds of sub assemblies or components or sub components. Uh, then you select them and give them different materials during the print preparation. And eventually you will have the final part as you are planning for. The bad sides or limitations for material jet ink is the mechanical properties. Uh, usually these parts printed with this technology uh, are not very strong. They are considered uh, like a brittle in nature uh, because they are acrylic based resin. So acrylic based resin that is... Uh, issued for functional testing uh, as well you want to keep in mind that these kind of materials are low temperature ranges materials so you can't use it for any kind of thermal applications or even you just want to keep in mind what kind of temperature ranges that the material you're using can handle otherwise your design may fail uh, for the specific application you are designing for and of course it's uh, don't even think about doing any kind of functional applications using this technology only for visual applications and prototyping uh, so the the rubber like material used is having a lack in elongation uh, this will lead to issues if you want to test the in a certain rubber application and as we mentioned temperature resistance and strength of the part are considered low level or weak so um, it can't be used for any kind of functional testing or real-world applications the cost these materials the, the technology of material jetting itself as a 3d printer is high and the materials used are expensive as well um, and the material cost will reflect that the, the cost of the printer itself um, of course it's way different than the FDM and SLA uh, printers that are cheap in, relatively cheap in, in the printer itself and the material used. Um, but you know, um, for material jetting, uh, you print um, your pr for the material jetting prints, uh, support as a solid mass will result in a large amount of waste. And um, all kinds of related build materials will be expensive compared to other 3D printing technologies. For post-processing of material jetting, you can use either support, you can use support removal, dyeing, sanding, metal plating, or polishing. General rules that you can follow, uh, material jetting usually produce a highly accurate parts that they have all kinds of details and smooth surface finish. Um, it could be, it can be considered as an ideal solution for visual models and prototypes. Parts produced are considered brittle parts. They are not a good, uh, good for for functional applications. If you want to do a functional application, then you want to go with SLS or metal printing as a better solution. And then the material jetting is the only technology that can give you full color uh, with flexible and stiff sections in a single build. Uh, the glossy surfaces must be oriented so that they can be facing upright in relation to the build platform so that you can have a su successful print. Uh, just a fast uh, review for the designing features. Major support walls should be minimum one millimeter in diameter. All other walls should be minimum 0.5 millimeter in diameter. Uh, pin diameter, if you design to go with a pin design, should be higher than 0.5 millimeter in diameter. Hole size should be minimum of 0.5 millimeter in diameter. Um, extruded and engraved details are minimum of 0.5 millimeter. Uh, the feature size, either pins, protruding features, um, print features can be as low as 0.25 of a millimeter. Uh, moving parts, assembled parts like hinges, joints, 
etc. should be 0.15 up to 2 millimeters clearance all around. Uh, for tolerances, you are looking at plus or minus 0.1 millimeter up to 0.3 millimeter depending on the geometry and the material that you are using.